Hello everybody. I guess you consider this part two of the, my previous video where I go up and I set everything up and I'll show you how I set up on an object. Only this time I'm going to do everything in Nina. There are some advantages to doing everything in one program and I'll get into that when I'm when I do the rest of the video. Anyways, I'm Kurt Zepatello and you're watching AstroQuest 1. Hey, before getting started, let me just show you a shot from the from my observatory. It's a beautiful night, or it's turning into a beautiful night. There, look at the moon. Oh, it's actually beautiful. And you can see my terrible frame, my terrible field of view that I have here. Here is directly overhead. Uh, you can see those blue point. So, anyways, but boy, it really looks nice tonight. Hey everybody, so what I would do first before I go set up on an object, I, I'd try to find out when it's going to be visible. I would go into Stellarium and check it out. So, because I got such a poor field of view as you guys just saw. So here's Stellarium and this red line, this is a custom landscape that I made. So this is where the tree line is. So over here would be in the trees and over here would not be in the trees. Now the object I'm shooting tonight is way over here. It's you know, or just it's in Orion. So let's go out and find out when it's going to be visible. Here, it, it, the object I'm looking at is it's SH two two six four, and it's right right up at the top of this point on Orion. It's also called the uh, the molecular ring, the Angelfish Nebula, the Orion's Head Nebula, the North Orion Bubble. So it has all those different names, and that's what I'm going to be going into tonight. So let's find out when it's going to be visible. All right, I'll give this here, and I'll, right now it's 520, 620, I'm still in the, it's dark outside, but I can't see it yet. 720, still not visible. 820, it's just starting to get visible. So when, it, when will it be uh, definitely past the trees? By 830. So that's what I got to look for when I want to shoot this object. So I do that with Stellarium first. Now I would open up Nina. Now this video is not a tutorial on how to use Nina. It's just showing what I do. If you really want a good tutorial on how to get started and get set up on Nina, I would recommend Queeve the Lazy Geek. He is the, the cheerleader, the ombudsman for Nina. He's the um, spokesperson, the unofficial spokesperson, he knows it up, down, and all around. Another good person to get some help from Nina would be Sean Nielsen, Nielsen from Visible Dark Astro. He, he really does a good job with uh, explaining things on Nina as well. And if you want to know Pix Insight, he's a dynamite person to look for Pix Insight. All right, the first thing I would do, um, I'll just turn on the camera, I would turn on the filter wheel. Turn on the focuser, turn on the telescope, okay, and I would unpark it. I'm not going to do any of that yet. And then I would, if, I, if I'm if i brand new to this site and I haven't made a sequence yet, I would come over here to a couple different ways. This is what I would do. I would go to Sky Atlas and the object. I said it was SH2. Two six four, and I would do a search for it, and lo and behold, there it is. And then what you can do is, you can actually set it as, as a sequence, or you can slew to it if you just want to see what it looks like. But I already know what it looks like. I would press set as a sequence, okay, and then it would give me all these little. Uh, things down here, and I would press on. This is the total number of exposures, you know, three exposures. It's set at one minute now. You can do it in seconds too. Let's say you want to do 90 second exposures. Oops. So now it's doing it as seconds. I can do lights, I can do darks, flats, bias. I just leave it lights. Filter, you can switch to filter, whatever you want. 
Binding, I leave it at one, one to one. Dithering, I like to dither every four or five frames myself. I'm gonna leave the gain at 139. That's the unity gain for my camera. And let's say I wanted to do it with, let's see, I think I did the filter. Um, let's say I wanted to do the luminosity filter. And then I wanted to do uh, red after that. Well, I could just come over here add a new sequence, everything's the same, and I would change that to red. And then after it, got, after it was done doing its luminosity, it would go into its red. Now, I also have it set to guide. Now, it's gonna, it's gonna start on auto guiding. It'll start up, slew to target, center on target. And it also, it's also set for auto focusing. Now, auto focus, if I wanted to do an autofocus on every time it changes filter, I would just turn that on. And now, after it got done doing light, went to the red filter, it would start um, doing another autofocus for, for that filter change. So it's on every filter change. And I could set it to after every, uh, a certain time limit. I, I leave it off. Um, well, actually, you know what I do? I usually do it uh, every two hours. So that would be 120 minutes. After a certain number of exposures, after a temperature change, you can have it do it. Uh, after an HFR increase, I would do it 20%. Some people just leave it at 10. It, you can do it whatever you feel comfortable with. But those are my settings, okay? And as I said, if you really wanna learn how to use Nina, I would recommend going to Queeve or Visible Dark Astro, Sean Nielsen and learn how to set up a sequence in Nina. Okay, now that's how that's that's what I would do. I, so I'm, I, I would wait till 8.30 and then I would just come out, do this and then press this button and it would start the sequence. Okay, folks, I'm back and it's a bit later. It's, it's no big deal. I just stop my sequence and I'll just start it up as if it was uh, fresh. Now, one thing I did when I was outside, I turned on this thing. This is the, the dew heaters. And I start up Nina. And what I forgot to tell you was, after I created that sequence, I save it. And here, let me open it up. Here is that sequence I created. And what I would have done was I would have just pressed, I saved the sequence and I would save it down here. And then I would open it up. This is the target that I'm doing and this would appear and my sequence is saved. Now, I already did the blue here, so I'm gonna erase that. Okay, good. And all I'm really finishing up on is the hydrogen alpha. And I, my original was to do 40 at uh, 180 seconds, which is three minutes. But I've already done 19 of them, so I really only gonna do so what I'm going to actually do is just clear this. If I press up here, and I'm just going to down to 21, and then I'll have my 40. And notice it saves all these other settings that I already did. Now, what I have to do is just press start, and it's going to, it's going to. Oops! Before I do that, I got to turn everything on. <laughs> got to make sure the camera's on, and the camera's already on. I didn't turn it off, and filter wheel. Filter wheel is already on. It's on hydrogen alpha. Turn the focus around. That's already on. And I'm going to make sure the telescope is on. It's on, but it's parked because I parked it. And now I got to turn the guider on. Okay, so the guider should pop on any second as soon as I press that. All right, the guider is on. So now all I have to do is come back to sequence. Press start. And the following issue is the telescope is parked. So I've got to, um, whoops, I got to unpark it. Hold on. Something always happens, and that's pretty good. This, this, this Nina will tell you if there's something that's not quite right. So let's go back to equipment, telescope, and unpark. And now we'll go back to sequence. And all systems are go. And so what it's doing now is it tells you right up here 
it's slewing to the target. Okay, this will take a few minutes to do everything because it's going to slew to the target, then it's going to autofocus, and then it's going to start guiding. Now, one thing I got to mention is I'm using Nina 1.10, 1.10. There is a new version out, uh, 1.11. It's actually a beta version. So it, this is the most stable one, but there's really a bit that beta version. And I saw people using it, and boy, it frazzles, it dazzles, it jumps up and down, it does everything. I, I think it'll make coffee for you in the morning. The only problem is it's much more complicated, and I like simplicity. So I'm using the old version. And here it is. It's, it, it's slewed to the target, and now it's doing its autofocus. Okay, now let's go take a look at I'm going to click on the PhD2. Now, look at this. This is a new beta version of PhD2 guiding. The new, this beta version, you got you to really uh, look for it, and uh, I'll provide some links where you can get it, uh, The this beta version. This beta version is awesome because you'll notice all these points here it does a it doesn't just guide off one star it guides off multiple stars and it makes better guiding I, this is brand new well it's been around for a while but it's brand new to me and i've been getting fantastic guiding with this all night tonight so far so i'm really really impressed with the uh, the new phd2 guiding so I'll put a link in the comments section when I'm done with this video. Okay, so I just I thought I'd show you that. And let's go back and it's doing its autofocus. Okay, we're back, and it's actually starting its uh, sequence right now. It already did that uh, autofocus, and let's go to imaging, and you can see it's on the target right now. So I am really happy. I'm going to let it go for a minute because I want to show you some other goodies that this thing does. So but let, let's wait till it gets on. Let, let's wait till it uh, does its first exposure. Okay, here we go. Here's the first exposure. It's looking real good. So let me show you some of the things here in Nina. Right down here, it tells you the sequence um, exposure. So it's 180 seconds. It's 15, 16, 17 into it. I've only got one sequence running right now. And over here, this shows the number of stars. And it shows my HFR for the average for this screen. And this is why I'm saying it's better to do everything in one program because, it, for example, it's doing it in Nina. It's giving me all this data for each exposure. And not only that, if you look down here, it does the previous exposures too. So I can see if I've got anything going on. Now, this is what I was doing throughout the night. And you'll notice the HFR. Has been pretty much stable at 251, 242. Uh, so I know I'm in pretty good focus uh, for this whole time. Not only that, it gives this mean the ADU for the entire background screen. So I know if there's a cloud coming by, it would be much higher. So and it's pretty stable right now. So I'm I'm getting good conditions right now. So i this is so those are some of the other bells and whistles when which it wasn't doing when I was going back to APT and then back to Nina. Um, it wasn't doing this, but since I'm doing it in one program here, Nina, it's, it's, it has a lot of good bells and whistles, as I was saying. So, And then the auto guiding's right down here, too. So I don't have to... I mean, this is PhD2, but that screen also shows up right here as well, down here. And there are some other bells and whistles with Nina that I don't really know about, actually. You can tell I'm sort of not as fluent as this 
with this program as I, uh, that I am with AP2, but I'm getting there. So, anyways, oh, I can show you this too. I, if you zoom in, you can see what's going on here. It's, like, it's real easy. So, anyways, let's go back to the sequence. And like I said, it's uh, telling me I'm on the second exposure and everything looks good. This is where it reaches its highest point, and right here's where it is right now, so it's on its way down. So Nina's pretty powerful program. I, I've been happy with it. So anyways, I'm sorry for doing all this tongue twisting. I don't mean to, but uh, I try to do these things in one setting, so I end up twisting over my own words. Anyways, I hope this helps, and we'll see you next time.